Hey, what's up guys? Um so for this new semester we're starting with 6.0. Now, this quote unquote chapter 6 is not in um big ideas. It's not part of the book. So, um we won't be using any sort of big ideas homework or any sort of anything from the book for this section. This is all just going to be notes from the class and and homework sheets that I hand out. So what we're going to be talking about in 6.0a is some introduction to some proofs and what that means. So what does it mean to actually prove something? Why do we prove things? So to prove something means that you establish that you have evidence to establish. So you have evidence to establish. something is true. Okay. And why do we need to prove things? Um, well, a lot of the times just in math, uh, specifically this unit we're talking about geometry, so we need to prove things to show ideas in geometry. will always be true in any situation okay um and honestly it's not just geometry but in general in math there's a lot of things a lot of the properties that we use a lot of the theorems that we cover um, are proven. Okay, so we use properties because they've been proven to, in a general sense, to apply to any situation. So proving things is actually really essential to math. Um, now let's define what a syllogism is. So syllogisms are statements that lead to one fact to another and a lot of proofs that we write so we'll be proving statements and we'll be proving a lot of things in this unit but we use syllogisms to guide us in our proof so we'll start with a statement and say because of this statement um, then this reason because of this reason than this right here. So we make up a list of facts that lead to statements and we back up these statements with proof, so with evidence. Okay. Now some here are some examples of, of syllogisms. So if you are accepted into Harvard Medical School then you will become a doctor. And if you are a doctor you must be rich, right? So we could actually just say that if you go to Harvard Medical School, so up here, if you go to Harvard Medical School, well, instead of, since we know that, we know that you'll be a doctor, and if you are a doctor, you're going to be rich. Okay, so that's pretty much what we can conclude from the syllogism. So, if you are accepted into Harvard Medical School, you will be a doctor. If you are a doctor, you will be rich. Therefore, if you go to Harvard Medical School, you will be rich. Here's another one. So angle A is 70 degrees. If an angle has a measure less than 90, then it is acute. Therefore, angle A is acute. So it's kind of just drawing, going from, you know, this because of this, and this because of and this because of this, well then we can just say angle A is acute. Angle A is acute. So it's kind of like a shortcut. You could think of it that way. So let's work on these syllogisms right here. So if you live in Manhattan, then you live in New York. And if you live in New York, you live in the United States. Therefore, if you live 
in Manhattan, well, that means, must mean that you live in the United States. Okay. Let's try number two. If Henry studies algebra, he will pass his test. If Henry passes his test, he will get good grades. So, from this we can conclude that if Henry studies his algebra, he will get good grades. Okay, number three. If I drive over glass, then I will get a flat tire. If I get a flat tire, I will have to change it. So, if I drive over glass, it's probably likely that I will have to change the tire. Okay. There you go. So that's what those, these are what syllogisms are. Now, before we get into anything else, let's make some uh define some terms. So you'll see some uh some these terms throughout this unit. So postulates and theorems. So a postulate is a big idea. We're not talking about the big ideas math, by the way. We're just in general talking about big ideas that are accepted as universal truths. So for example, 3 plus 2 is equal to 5, right? We also know that 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So this is a universal truth, right? It's just something that we kind of accept um, without proof. Um, I guess I should state that as well in this definition. So they are universal truths without proof. Okay. Without proof. So it's just like they're true, but there's no really uh, set proof to say that these ideas are true. We just know that they are. That it's universally accepted. Now, theorem, on the other hand, these are ideas that can be proven using deductive logic. So basically, like through syllogisms. Whenever we use syllogisms, we make a deduction. We use proof. So if you live in Manhattan, you live in the United States. Now, we prove that because if you live in Manhattan, you live in New York. And if you live in New York, you live in the United States. So there is an idea that we proved using deductive logic through a syllogism. Okay, now to help us organize our proofs, we are going to follow what we call a two column proof format. So to do this, first thing to do is to write, write the information given and what you are trying to prove. Okay, so um, we'll cover these steps and I'll show you what it actually means. But um, So that's the first thing. You have to know the information given. So if you're going to be proving something, well, you have to start by using information that you know, right? So like up here, if you live in Manhattan, that's information, okay? You're given the idea that you live in Manhattan. 
and maybe you know that Manhattan is in New York. That's information given to you, right? So we are trying to prove here that Manhattan is in the United States. So we're trying to prove Manhattan is in the United States and we use information like that Manhattan is in New York and that New York is in the United States. We use this information to prove that Manhattan is in the United States. Okay, so write the information that you're given and the idea that you are trying to prove. Next thing that we do is we draw a T. Okay, um, basically like a table. In the first column of this T, this is used for statements. So things that must be true. Things that must be true. And the second column are reasons. Is used for the reasons. Which is basically saying why you know it's true. Okay, so what this is going to look like in general, if you have a table, you'll have statements here, and you'll have reasons here. Okay, now to help us get uh, an idea, we'll slowly work up to this, but we're going to do what's called UNO proofs. So we're going to use the game of UNO as an example of proving something. So we are going to state that, so for... Uh, the rules of UNO so the rules for UNO are our postulates so again ideas that we know are true without proof right so basically the rules of UNO are you can play a card on top of a card you can play a card of the same color you can play a card of the same number and you can play a wild card to change the color at any time Okay, and so for the instructions here, it says to write a formal two-column proof for each of the problems below. So a t-chart and list statements and reasons. So here, let's go ahead and make our t. Here are going to be the statements, and here's going to be the reasons. Now let's write down first what we know and what's given. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to go from blue 6 and we're trying to prove yellow reverse using these cards that we have. Okay, So we're going to be using a yellow 1, a wild, a blue skip, and a yellow 5. And you must use all cards. So all of these cards we have to use to prove blue 6 to yellow reverse. So let's start with blue 6. Okay, we're going to start with blue 6. Now we're going to start with blue 6 as a statement, and the reason why we're starting with this is because it is given. Okay, so start with what's given, and what's given is blue 6. Now if we want to go from blue 6 to yellow reverse we have to use these cards so I'm thinking that if I have a blue 6 I'm thinking right here I want to play my blue skip now if I use my blue skip I can use it what's the reason why I can use it 
I can use that because it's the same color. So now I have a blue skip. Okay, now I can't use my yellow one card because I don't have the same number because I'm at blue skip. And I can't use a yellow five because again I don't have the same number or color. So I'm going to choose to use my wild card right now. And a wild card can change the color. So I'm using this. My reason I can play this is to change color and I'm going to change it to yellow. So now that I have yellow, I can use my yellow 1 or my yellow 5. So I'm just going to choose to use yellow 1. And I can choose yellow 1 because I have the same color. Because remember how I changed it. I changed it to yellow. So I played the yellow 5, so I've used my wild, my blue skip, and my yellow 5. I still need to use my yellow 1. And I can use my yellow 1. And I can use that because I'm playing a card of the same color. And finally, I can go to yellow reverse. I've used up all my cards. And now I can prove yellow reverse because it's the same color. And there we go, we just proved yellow reverse. Going from blue six to yellow reverse and using this information right here. So I guess you can uh, think of that, this right here, using these cards, it's kind of like our statements, or, or not our, um, yeah, our statements, right? Now let's try going over here. So again, let's make a table. And here we're going to write our statements. Over here is the reason. Always start with what's given. And what's given is blue 5. That's the first statement. Blue 5 is given. And the reason why I can use that is because it's given. Now I'm trying to prove green 6 using these two cards. So how can I go from blue 5 to green 6 using these two cards? I can't use green 1 because I that's not the same number or color, but I can use blue 1 because it's the same color. blue one. Now my only option is to use green one and I can use green one because it's the same number. So I've used up all my cards. Now can I prove green six? And I can. I can use a green six card because I have the same color. Okay, so we proved green 6 from blue 5 to green 6 using that information. Let's try one more. So again, make your T, draw your T. Here's going to be my statements. And the reason. What is given? Well, the first information I have is blue 7. And I can use that. My reason for using that is because it's given. And here I'm going to be using green 4, yellow 9, green 7, and yellow 4 to get to red 9. So I don't have any blue cards, but I do have a card with green 7. And this is 7, so let's play that card. So green, 7, and I can play that because of the same number. Now, so that's gone. Let's use green, 4 now, because it's the same color. 
So green four for the same color. And now I can use yellow four for the same number. And now I can use yellow nine for the same number. And finally, I've used up all my cards, so I can go to red nine because of the same number. Sorry, and I think that this should have been same color, right? So because I played yellow for same color, and I could use yellow nine for the same color, and then this one's for the same number. So there we go, proved yellow nine for the same number. So go ahead and see if you can try number four and five on your own. You can pause the video and try it on your own. Okay, now last what we're going to talk about is using algebraic proofs. So you've actually been using proofs this whole time, or the idea of proofs. Now we're going to de define what these properties are. Okay, so these are algebraic proofs. So the addition property states that if a is equal to b, then a plus c is equal to b plus c. So this is what we use a lot of times whenever we're adding to uh, an equation. And an equation has both sides. So if I add c to one side of the equation, I have to add it to the other. And this property says that the equation will hold true. Now it's the same idea with subtraction. So if a is equal to b, then a minus c is equal to b minus c. So again, if you subtract c from a on the left side of the equation, you have to subtract c from the right side of the equation. Multiplication. If a, t uh, uh, if a is equal to b, then a times by c is equal to b times by c. For division, if a is equal to b, and if c does not equal 0, so c can't be 0, then a divided by c is equal to b divided by c. So those are ones that you guys should be familiar with. Now this one, again, you might be familiar with, but maybe we don't use so much as often as these other ones, but this is called the substitution property, which says if um, a is equal to b, then a can be substituted for b in any situation. So it's just a method of substitution. And so we call that the substitution property. There's the reflective property, which says for any real number, a is equal to a. So anything is equal to itself. Kind of goes without saying a little bit. It might think that it goes without saying, but there's a property that says that for any real number, any number is equal to itself. The symmetric property says if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. Transitive property if a is equal to b and if b is equal to c well then a is equal to c so again a is equal to b b is equal to c therefore a and c are also equal to each other and the distributive property says a parenthesis b plus c is equivalent to a b plus a c so that's the distribution method, distribution property. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to solve algebraic expressions and equations using the property. So you've solved algebraic expressions and equations. Um, you know how to do this, except we're just going to write it using our two column proofs that we know how to use now. So let's write out our two column proofs, where here you're going to have your statements and then your reasons. Okay. So remember that you start with what's given. What's given is this. So 2x plus 5 is equal to 20 minus 3x. Now we start there because it's what's given. That's our reason. Now let's solve this for x because we want to prove that x is equal to 3. But remember that the reasons have to be these properties. So I know that I can subtract 5 subtract 5 from here so then I'm left with 2x is equal to 15 minus 3x now I know I can do that I have to state the reason why I know that and the reason why I can do that is from the substitution or the subtraction property the subtraction property tells me I can do that okay now I know that I can add this 3x over here and this 3x over here and this becomes 5x is equal to 15 and I know I can do that from the addition property and then I could divide by 3 and I will get x is equal to 3 and I can do that by the division property. There you go. We just proved x is equal to 3. That's what we wanted to prove. And we made a statement. We made a list of arguments. So you just proved with evidence that x is equal to 3 for this equation. Okay. Now let's go down and do another problem here. So we have given negative 4 times by x minus 8 equals negative 16. So what do we start with? Negative 4 times by x minus 8 is equal to negative 16. And I start here because it's what's given. Now the thing is I can do two different things here. I can use the distributed property, right? Or if I wanted to, I could divide both sides by negative 4, which is the division property. I'm going to use the distributive property. Um, also, you're trying to prove here that x is equal to, I think, 12. Might be negative 12. Um, yeah, no, x is equal to 12. That's what we're trying to prove here. So I'm going to distribute this. So I have negative 4x plus 32 and that's equal to negative 16 and I can do that from the distri uh, distribution property so by distribution now I can subtract 32 from both sides so I get negative 4x is equal to negative 48 and this is the subtraction property I can divide by negative 4, which would mean x would be equal to positive 12, and I did that through the division property. And there you go, x is equal to 12. So try number 2 on your own, and number 4. For number 3, I'll give you one here. So negative 4 times 11x plus 2 is equal to 80 and you want to prove that x is equal to negative 2. And don't worry about this one, just leave blank, but these ones will be extra practice for you guys. You guys can do these and get a feel for your own on how you can do these problems. Okay, so that should do it for this uh, unit. Um, make sure that you check out the homework assignment as well. Thanks guys.